it's on most sports to deliver it because Astralis, well, they've already delivered a hell of a performance on that opening map. Can they repeat? Can they three-peat? So many questions. So many rounds still to be played. I mean, let's be real. We can't jump the gun. This would just be that 2-0. But a reverse sweep at a best of five, that is a rare occasion. Nothing special just yet. No decisions be being made. Whatever is easy to take, they'll take it. You know, Frozen's back here. They might have a read on what the setup is going to be, so there's pressure on Mouse Sports to maybe take a, a peek here or there. Wouldn't be the worst idea to look down mid, maybe. And there's a chance. Very clinical stuff here from Rops. That's one down at the bottom of mid, and immediately Astralis is like, oh, you want to fight? Okay, we'll come to A. Getting one step closer. It's Dupree over towards the balcony. He will be kept in by Kerrigan. Oh, Robs with the one tap. And Glaive's going to take one through the corner of the wall. So it's the exit from the balcony that's meant to go well for Astralis. But Kerrigan, he's going to be able to slip himself around the box before finally dying to Zipex. But Zipex doesn't have a bomb. And Zipex isn't floppy. Yeah, as if it, what a world that we could say that. At least at this tournament, honestly, Poppy's the most clutch player of the goddamn planet for what we see. So, yeah, that's true. Um, let's say he's, lost, uh, he's on a lost streak on the 1v1 sitbacks. Not quite the sitbacks of old, uh, at least not uh, in this past this past day or two. Really good stuff here by Robs. Even in a, another headshot through the wall, and he'll even catch Glaive after shooting him in the head through the wall. Robs, go kill. That's the game plan. Damn. Who knew it was so easy? Just got to pay for Rops. Oop. Come on, Rops. Oh, God damn it. Come on. Third time's the charm. Back to 1.6. I like how they just gave up. They don't even boost B-Mass. Or use B-Mass to boost him. Like, nah, never mind. I didn't want to go up there to begin with. I'm rushing underpass. <laughs> <laughs> Frag Grenade is on the money! Frozen and Chris J throwing them nades down deep. And the... Oop, tapping away with the MP7. Frozen, nicely done. Making money off those SMGs. You know, it's, a, it's, about, it's about taste. It's about, um, it's about preference when it comes to SMGs. I think Chris J uses the MP7 just because it's covered in those Katowice 2014 stickers. He, oh, okay. Maybe that's why he is really good. He, he does buy it a lot. Like, yeah. it's like MP7 is a great gun. It's a great gun. It's just a little expensive. Like if it was any cheaper, it'd be easily the best SMG pound for pound. You know, it still could be worth it because you get that loss bonus. But yes, it's Chris J. It's Chris J. Whatever you need him to do, J. Okay. So here are some nades into banana. The tricky part about this is that we've seen what mouse boards do when they fall back into the sites. They'll try to re aggress at the top of Banana, but look how far out Majesty is getting. He's making sure that they don't push up again. And this position will also result in a kill as Chris was looking to rotate. There's a player at first oranges, but Astralis can move into an exec right behind this. Frozen behind second oranges now, tucking back, Frozen. Well, he's lost Kerrigan, who's here to try and help. Rops just on the other side could start putting M4 shots through, but it's Frozen still to hold the line. He hasn't died. 19 health left, and he evacuates into the dark corner. Zipix and Shadow shown. Uh-oh. And now Frozen knows he is in for a world of hurt, but here comes Rops, pushing through the smoke for a single kill. And to fight? Well, it's a labored spray, leaving him and Dupree incredibly low. Despite having the better weapons, Astralis stalling out on the front of this bomb site, but they will still have a chance to close. As device slips by, Rops seems to know exactly what he's doing. Nicely done by Rops. Oh. Seven and zero off the start. Three kills in this round. Okay. Well, that, that was such a nice round for Mouse Sports. Uh, first of all, Frozen staying alive. Talked a lot about de devices, uh, like ability to stay alive from Quad using his nades. Protocols were fantastic here. Great flashes from BMAS. Want to credit him for helping them delay long enough. You know, if they if if there are no flashes into the site, then all of the Astralis players can just swarm. They can they know Frozen's by himself. They can try to attack him, but the flashes constantly made it harder for them to make progress. And this co perpetual threat of someone pushing CT spawn loomed over top of them. 
interesting idea here. We saw Godsent kind of just wait and then re-aggress, right? After Top Banana would be taken, knowing that Mouseports would eventually fall back like they are doing again. Mm, Astralis, on the other hand, last round, they just pushed up early, got through in between the grenades. A different style of it. Dupree is dead. Frozen challenging on Coffins. Chris J up close on top of it with a Molotov to burn Glaive. Still very much early days, but this has got to be a little bit of a relief for Mouse Sports that the second map doesn't start the first way. Uh oh. oh the way the first one ended. Uh oh. Little AK spray. Oh! Device 1v2. is delivering. Three kills, bomb and in front of him. And a smoke to retrieve it. Let's see what device. Oh, oh no way he gets that. Device is on for the ace. It took him four rounds to get a single kill, but he the moment he has one, he has four. He might go A. The rotates through. Oh my god, he runs this fast. This guy, man. It's it, he's just his brain is pulsating right now. The lobes are going. He's running over to the A side. It's a complete read. There will be so long before Robs figures out it's not this site and runs back. There is almost no chance that Robs even wins this round. I just said that they must feel relieved. He knows how long it'll take for Robs to get back here based on how early he ran. He can play this however he wants. Robs does have the kit, an incendiary and a flashbang. He's got health advantage. But it's Device. Sitting back in the little pit, Robs is going to come out. If he takes out any utility once he exits this door, he's going to be so exposed, and now he's been seen. Device dodges the first couple of shots. Robs is going to take some damage, and oh. Device goes down. Robs, it's him that seems invincible here on Inferno. 8-0, and, oh, and a fourth round for Mouse Sports, but talk about Puckered. Oh my god. It comes down to those two taps. I'm actually shocked that Device peaks from Mini like that, in that position. Understanding where Rops is coming from, spotting him, delaying of time would have been entirely possible. But the Vice looked like he wanted to end it in style. Look at these kills! After all that, he'll go for the aim map versus Rops. That's brave. Let that be a warning to Mouse Sports. Now we've got Astralis on the full fledged buy. What was that start? 1v what? 1v3? Well, either way, lots of damage dealt off that round, but it's, you know, Mouse Sports falling on their speed, feet, and some of these scrappy rounds are able to survive. Nicely timed. Taking device down to 50 health, that's nothing to just shrug about. No close rotation, two T's from Astralis still over on the A site. Let's see what this scrambles. Kerrigan now coming over. Everybody leaving Banana from Astralis. A lot of pressure on BMAS. And I think if we see Astralis start to hit this A site, that's where BMAS has to turn into 3MAS. He needs to be able to get them big multi-kills today. He needs to be able to step up alongside Frozen and Rops like he has been for Mouse Sports. Watch for the next flash. Comes over the top. Kerrigan's going to be behind the tall box. BMAS dies instantly, empty-handed, but here's Rops. He has 10 kills already. And he's got two more to take down here. Man advantage for Mouse Sports, and Rop's gonna cool off because he knows he can wrap this around through the apartments. Astralis in the post plant yet again. Not much room to wiggle with. Magisk over in the pit. Oh, he's moving up fast. Yeah, Rob. Robin's right on the cusp of it. Smoke over the top. Magisk in the open, caught off guard. Rop's now three kills in this one, and it's Zipex relegated to the back <laughs> site, popped by Rops. He is doing his best device impression, because this kid's 12-0 and 0 off the get-go. Mouse Sports leading 5-0. He is sick at Inferno. Here on the CD side, so much work being put in. That initial spray, usually it's burst with Rops, but he has two targets out in front of him. Continuation onto Device, who is brought down low by the HE nade of Frozen earlier on the round over on Banana and just perfect angle clearing. He is the guy on T side to come through halls and knows how to entry, so you better believe he knows how to retake from it on CT Charles' T side to bring that stat back.
Well, now we get to see their T side. Most boards get to try and hold it off. Very strong start. Grenades have been excellent for most sports towards Banana. Yeah, they've been they've been good. I mean, they definitely have the nades to keep up, 100%. I'm not going to say they have many weaknesses on this map. Mouse Sports just coming to form, helps them bring this up. Frozen, eyes on him again. You know, so good on the CD side, Chris. He's dying sometimes. Frozen. Oh, he'll get the kills. And Rops will put one between the eyes of Dupree, jumping up under the balcony. They're moved back into the site, but they're up a player, and they've done that early damage, as he pointed out, on device once again. Another test for the B bomb site. Kerrigan coming over. Nice rotation over here from the CT side. It's two smokes between mouse sports. No fire to be thrown here at the feet of Astralis. Flashbang for Kerrigan. Sees a Whoa. foot as he walks away from it. Is he going to come back in for second servings? They're on high alert. They put down. A smoke for the incendiary, frozen on the new box. He's the player with the vision. It's an op alongside him. Chris to 33 HP. Kerrigan's gonna deliver a kill alongside Chris. Frozen now coming into the action. Only two T's to take down. It's Device and Glaive on the side of Coffin with no bomb possession. And another kill from Chris despite all of that on top of him. But it's Device in the clutch. He jumps. He gets back bomb, two CTs to peek from spawn, and BMAS cuts him down. Mouse Sports have not stuttered. Mouse Sports have not stalled. 6-0 the start. So nicely done here from Mouse Sports. Rops 13-0. Frozen so good at that quad position. I think they're not mollying him because they don't want it to be smoked. They want him to fight, but they're not getting the opportunities. The rotations are really good for Mouse Sports. Kerrigan goes for a read that round, walking over early towards uh, the B site, but you have to give credit where credit's due. He knows when he, he should move. Alex said, you know, it was always hard to keep a tr keep track of him when it came to when he'd stack, and it's something that he likes to do. And um, yeah, Glaive kind of did the same thing when it came to out calling him on train. So the confidence is starting to change hands a little bit here. Things very much making sense for Mouse Sports. Oh, hefty. Like a purse full of lead lands right on him. Hits him in the chest. That's going to be just as good. Clearing 100 damage with that one. Yep. It's all shared across three players. Kerrigan, a little bit labored on the spray, but he gets there. And he still stands. BMAS kind of pulled between two directions. Finds the better of the timing, but can't quite kill Magisk. Oh, and Rops finally dies. It's to the Mac 10 of Zipex. His first death of this second map. Kerrigan wow. going to try to spam some damage, but I think Mouse Sports have to save. That's a shocking way to lose a round. They actually had good positions to hold. Of course, Zipex kill on Rops is everything. If he holds up there, they cannot enter the site too easily. They could still probably score a bomb plant, but then Kerrigan also not getting the damage, enough damage off on Arch, plus the early kill and HE damage is damage to follow uh, for Mouse Sports. I think that were, they were set up pretty well, but those two entries, of course, this is what we talked about, the variants. You know, if you don't have the overstack site, you can't make up for the fact that a couple of very, like either lucky entries or really sick entries will make it so that you have no chance of winning the round, even though they clearly have better guns. So four survivors here for Astralis. Direct correlation, Robs dies, Astralis succeeds. <laughs> yeah, just like the device storyline. Yeah, Robs has been everything. This has been very impressive so far from Mouse Sports, from Robs. Kerrigan's coming through with reeds. You know, they're they're moving they're removing the cobwebs that were there on train. Yeah, it's a little bit of a slow start, you know, but now the uh, the cogs are churning. The wheels are turning. No sports yearning to bounce back on this second one. Try to even out the series. 2-0 and a best of five is a daunting task. It's the name of the patience here from Zipex. Rob's going to have his attention kind of pulled between both this doorway and the apartments themselves. Zipex, don't look away, because now is your chance. And he will find that first kill versus Rob's. But it's Chris J still scoped in up close, crouching. Oh, what a He's 10. right there. 
sees Zipex aiming so low, but the crouch is even beneath this, and oh. oh my god, can somebody just peek, please? They're so close. Somebody make a move! And it's gonna cost him. Zipex, with ice in his veins, waits out Chris J. Five versus three off the back of that, but good damage from b -Mass. Two kills through the smoke, that's massive. It's enough! Oh my god! Oh, it's enough, all right! They've had enough! As they try to get into this A site, we see Astral has taken down a peg. Surprise, surprise. It's b -Mass from the corner, flash through smoke. He's on for the ace, and he's gonna get it! Mouse Sports right back on the board. The disrespect lineup through the smoke on Art. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, lines him up and knocks him down. They can't even turn the corner. That's sick. He had the pre-aim ready, the timing ready. Like they're playing human centipede out here, trying to get around uh, into the site. It's gruesome, that's for sure. The eating bullets, not ass in this one. <laughs> Look at the damage. It's nuts. The reload stays recomposed, goes right back to what was working. Flashes himself through the smoke. Closes. That round is all BMAS. That's not support from a teammate. That's not presence from anybody else. He, he didn't find some timing because his initial hold in apartments went semi-well. No, that is BMAS from the start to the end. Digest that one. I'm trying. Not you, Frankie. You're all right. Double arch setup. Kerrigan here this time. New challenge. Rops. Same position. Swings out. Oh, he gets... Oh, he does flick back. Or does he get a kill in the background? He does. No, he flicks back. Oh. Sexy stuff from Rops. A B-mask inside of the pit. Let's see it, kid. Goes extending around the side of his own smoke. And sure enough, Magic's going to give him a little taste of his own medicine. We're back down into the two versus two. Astralis pissed after that last round showing. But Mouse Sports split as Frozen tries to find his calling. Magic's in the little pit. Device in the back sight. Chris J's going to be spotted. And oh no, now Magis knows exactly where both CTs are at. Oh my god. Oh. Frozen almost gets cleared. Oh, and it's through smoke from Magis. This is going to activate Chris. He walks in and he knows Device is back here. Both offers missing a shot and Device recovers quicker with a no scope to the chest. Rest in peace, Chris. Mouse Sports 7, Astralis 2. What happened? What happened? They had Magis in that moment. They could have turned the corner on Pit. I don't know. I guess they didn't see him. Look at this damage. Wow. Yeah, way back on Zipex. It wasn't done with you, buddy. He'll get the kill, and there's the no-scope from the device jumping up the reposition. It's kind of like, like an op knives type situation. Just going for the shots where if you can find him, knew he was going to get caught in the reposition. Beamass. Whoa! His first ace. Well, two ops here between Kerrigan and Chris. So first ace. Yeah, that's, that's surprising and really awesome. And it was a really good ace. Yeah. It wasn't just a, yeah, it was a pretty cool ace, something unique. Welcome to the big leagues. Let's see it. Oh, one more. Oh, one more. Yeah, 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 yeah. One more. He's coming, he's coming. Come on. Come, come, come. All right, all right. Fall back. Let him come to you. I like the idea. Damn. If it's going to be Rops to kick off the second map and BMAS is right behind him, then that's the oh. kind of recipe oh. that they need. Everybody from Mouse Sports has to step up. And Kerrigan, well, he's going to deliver this off frag inside of the apartments. BMAS with a deagle on the side of the spoke slips through. What you doing, device? Where are you going? Wow, he just out -dueled. I mean, he just out off Dupree, right? Like, perfect pre-aim, faster shot. And Dupree, I think, was opping at the end of the long haul there, waiting for that specific peak. Nasty by Kerrigan. Now just in the 1v5. Dies. Mouse Sports taking eight. This is a stellar defensive half. Now we're into that back stretch. Five rounds to go for Astralis to try and recover. Mouse Sports definitely starting to heat up. That's a sick shot, Kerrigan. Really sick stuff. Um, they keep this, and then they upgrade in the middle. All their pistols now have AKs. Astralis, they've won a couple of eco rounds, but they're really falling apart here on T-side. Shocking to see. Three players up alt. Oh, 
Excuse me, make that four. And basically, either of these teams decimate any other team in this tournament on Inferno. Decimate. Own them. But now they're going up against each other, and we're seeing Mouse Force come through with this big of a lead? Insane. Kerrigan creeping back around the angle. Misses the shot, dives into cover. Astralis not going to stick with this, but they've done a good job of getting Mouse Sports to stack heavy on the A site. They've got one flashbang, two smack tens, and a whole lot of gusto to try and take this B site. Chris J over on the new box. It's his turn to deliver. And oh, Frozen, three kills immediately, two with the AK, one off the frag. It's a full house on the B site for Mouse Sports. Starting to really fall in love with this uh, Frozen Chris J affair over on B. They are working well, so well together. The harder site to hold. And Chris, sometimes he dies, but Frozen almost never. Device. Of course, it's being supported by returns to form from the likes of this guy, Kerrigan and Chris. Double off, two pronged assault. But one of the frontiers goes down. Device inside of the smoke. He's got a couple of players trying to go onto the boost. He could just rock their world. Frozen's gonna get called out. Chris J jumps back into the cover, and then he sticks around. Oh, and he just no-scopes Device, looking like he had a chance at an additional kill. But suddenly that B site's compromised, and it's there for the taking. Astralis, well, they're gonna get this third one, because you just know BMAS and ROPS are gonna have to save. Yeah, basically, the only rounds that Astralis are winning here are they're getting these crazy, crazy entries whether it's on their save rounds or a round like this where they, you know, Device gets one over Frozen. Frozen's waiting for him to come through with that push. He's not even flashed off his position either, so there's a chance they die, but the, the setup falls apart beyond that. And of course, opening kill for Magisk on the push down mid. Don't know if that was one of the ops or not, but uh, whoever it was took a bullet to the face. I think you're still fine here if you're mouse boards playing it cool. I don't know what you're necessarily worried about at the moment, because I think the more important rounds you're winning, like the rounds that are slowed down a bit, it's kind of like what we saw on Train, but it's like Mouse Sports only started winning when they started doing these kinds of rushes. So I think the only thing that Mouse Sports have to worry about is making sure to stop them. It'll be so cool to see what happens when we move into the second half, but there's still a chance here for one one unbelievable CT side here for Mouseports. Or a quiet crawl back for us to roll us to six. Almost on the money. Yeah, they've got him pushed all the way back. There's a lot of CTs holding here at mid, and they were spotting it with BMAS, so I wonder if they're gonna rotate over. Oh, they're gonna throw some late grenades. I think they catch a bit of a timing here. Astralis, maybe that makes them uncomfortable. Oh! Woo. Yeah, Wait we're getting that. greasy. There's so many oh. layers to this utility, and then on top of that, he pushes nearly into the boost. Damn. A lot of posturing going on here on Banana. You love to see it. Layers on layers of setups. Man, they're, they're playing Cubby on Arch so often, and it's been a really important spot here for Mouseport. It's on the CT side. They're getting info on, on mid once in a while. It's not always smoked. And Astralis, they're, yeah, they're changing the game plan a little bit. They know, I mean, they've seen Kerrigan rotate as a third man over in this position before. And I think they don't want to make fools of themselves by running into the stack. But th there isn't Kerrigan here right now. And Rops again in the cubby. Let's see what it can do. Perfect Another time. kill, yeah. It's... Then he waits. And if he goes right back, oh. he's going to find himself another. But Device, well, he's gotten a kill over on the B site. Bomb inbound. Oh, Rops takes Zipix out of the sky. And even with the second player on B dead, Mouse Sports will hold with Bomb in a comfortable three versus one. Double digits on the CT side of Inferno. Their opponent's map pick. Yeah, <laughs> they both are taking their opponent's map pick, potentially, and doing it in style. Man, I'm loving the game plan here for Mouseports. They're doing a good enough job of making the round long on B. The Straws clearly wanted to go there early. That gets shut down. Over here, Cubby is getting used over and over again. It's been such a critical component. Allowed BMAS to get his ace. We saw Robs get a 2k from there. Another 2k right here. 
and it's something that Astralis are overlooking a little bit. I really like how uh, Mouse Sports are approaching this. This is what we needed to see. You know, even if they just fizzled into like an 8-7 CT side on Inferno, you'd think that you'd think that Astralis just had too much. But if they can dominate them in at least an opening 15, then it takes back that precedent. It takes back the tone Astralis set for this series. Which really did sound and feel like domination. So, do they have a stack going on at Arch? It looks like they do which is a new way to disrespect this smoke and something that might not get cleared, right? So we'll see, Dupree's up close, they're spamming. They might know someone's pushed up. Oh, they're trying to get away from it and it'll end up getting them a kill. Oh, Sipix, he was watching the other direction. They did not anticipate that one. They're getting outdone. Incendiary in both directions as well here from Mouse Sports, making the most of the utility just to keep the tease away from any kind of big commitment. Will Mouse Sports make an additional move? Will they go pushing anywhere, prying for information? With a man advantage, are they comfortable to just sit? Glaive gets the AK back. That's everyone from Astralis on full force. The device is tagged to 50 and 30 seconds left on the clock. They're going to leave this A site with Mouse Sports having the majority of their members over on that side of the map. It is Chris J and Frozen to combine. But then all of a sudden, oh. the double back once more, and it works perfectly. It works perfectly. It is only Kerrigan inside of the site, and Glaive, well, he's got b -Mask cut off, but b -Mask barrels back. Kerrigan from the top rope shuts down Magisk, and b -Mask right there to help him. Astralis thought they'd gamed the rotates, and oh, had they ever. But Mouse Sports, at that final moment, realize what's up and shut Astralis down. Now they're coming through on an individual level as well. Nice positioning here from Kerrigan. Oh, BMAS being very careful about stepping back into Arch. These were all huge. And Glaive, he makes the play right. He he, he put, throws the Molotov down about halfway through the smoke, picks up the gun. As soon as the smoke comes up, Molotov comes up as well. He knows nobody moves back into Cubby, so he has that cleaned 100%. And then, again, the B hit into the A hit. It was actually a beautiful game plan by Astralis but uh, the individual showing up now for Mouse Sports on top of it. Heavy apartments control from Astralis. Very much now known. Not hiding it or masking the sound they're making. Damn, VMAS does not die. Four deaths at the moment. Really happy to see that. We needed to see something from Mouse Sports. And it was never going to be a one man army. VMAS is going to extend into middle here, looking for that headshot. The Drops Punisher. To adjust. It's him and Rops combining side by side for heavy impact. But it's Zipex trying to clutch in the one versus four. 40 seconds, bomb belongs to Mouse Sports. And BMAS, he's already cut off his exit. Zipex, he's gonna have to stay honed in on this, but he turns his attention, and BMAS is gonna find him through the end lead as they take to the T side of what was Astralis's first map pick. Best of five grand finals here for DreamHack Masters Winter. We got a lot of Counter-Strike on the docket, and it kinda seemed like it was slipping, but not so much anymore. Zipex. Nice execution with the pistol. But of course, he is the one man in position from Astralis on this B site early. A lot of bodies coming over for the retake, though. Do not think this one is done. Kerrigan, he's going to be barely alive, though. Comes off of that bomb plant. Chipped away to 3 HP. Glaive looking for an entry. He gets executed oh. alongside Dupree. Yeah. So it's all on device and magic. Can we get this wraparound for Mouse Sports? Chris, he's going to puff his chest and draw attention away from the fact that there's a double flank here for Mouse. BMAS, easy execute. Device, 1v3. Takes down Frozen, but now he's stuck in the crossfire and Mouse Sports with a 10 round lead. Three mass strikes again. Another great round from him. So good on the pistols as well. 19 and four. He's coming up on Rops. He's got almost a better score than Rops at this point. That is crazy. Two outstanding performances on top of a great game plan from Mouse Sports out of the first half.
I am so glad we are at this point because it was Astralis. Like you, ha I want to be very honest. You know, Astralis looked better in every sense of the world. Kerrigan got outplayed, outcalled, and everyone got outshone. But in this game, the absolute opposite is true, and it's looking so damn good. And honestly, this might be an even more impressive win if they pull it off because it's here on Inferno. A map that we thought Astralis would it happily take away from them, but it's a little flash around the corner, of banana to get a man advantage. There is still tons of utility for Astralis to work with. And if Mouse Sports want to take this map as clean as Astralis took train, they got to make sure they minimize mistakes. Yeah. This, the, the big thing here is like, it looks really random sometimes when Kerrigan's walking around in T-Con, but on the top of Banana, like on T-Con on train, but on the top of Banana, it's more of a 50-50. Like, he can pull it off. Astralis do something similar with their T-side. But okay, Magis, hard right angle. Looking for the Jormungandr one piece, and Chris J will make sure he can't get that. That could potentially be the site taking down. There's one person peeking out. The walk-up is huge. Dupree next up to bat. Molly to Naden. Dupree with his second and third kill of the map. Did Drops do that in air? No. No. Okay. It did look like Glaive. Looking to take this away. All that's left over now. 5-7 oh. getting away from him. He's got 4-3. Four, one bullet left in the magazine, and a reload could absolutely cost him. Smoke soon to fade. He needs to kill Rob with that, and then he has a chance, because he even gets his paws on a Galil. Runs over to the bomb site. He's got 7 HP, taps it twice, Frozen peaks, 5-7, back in hand, and now Frozen walks away. There is no time for Glaive to get this defuse. Nice play by Frozen. Yes, sir. Oh. Disengaging at the proper moment. Runs back in for the sake of it, says, I'm not scared to die. Mouse Sports, 14-3. Reads that perfectly. Understands the odds of him having a kit. Look at all the dead bodies around the A site. Nicely handled for Mouse Sports, even though it comes close. Astralis almost pulled that back, right? A couple of wild 5-7 shots earlier maybe resulted in death on Frozen 2. Mouse Sports on 14. They survived the NT Eco, and again, might have the easy route here to the end. I think, talk about the end. Astralis might fight to the bitter end here on CT side. Maybe they'll win a, a few rounds, but at this point, they just they can't account for the fact that Mouseboard's T side is very competent. Carrick is going to waste no moment. Just runs through the mid smoke like it's nobody's business, and Glaive says, I can do it too. Dupree is going to get blown away by Frozen. Kerrigan's created so much space that this bomb gets moving up short, and they will find that pit is clear, apartments is clear, everything is theirs for the taking. So much so, in fact, that Astralis are going to let this round slip through their fingertips. A 15th on the board for Mouse. 12 map points. And Kerrigan, he's not satisfied. His bloodthirst not satiated until he takes down Zipex. And even then, he thinks to himself, he wants a little bit more. Device, smoke to the floor. He escapes for the time being. Dude, that's not, I, mean, I thought if Mouse Sports won this, it'd be like 16, 13, maybe. Had to be a grind. Down yeah. to like individuals, huge clutches. This is great stuff. Talk about it more potentially here in the, in the post game. But, um, I think that first half came down to just great, great re reliance, be being able to rely on Frozen and be some great support nades for him over towards the B site, uh, and also, uh, and also just using that cubby spot, which we'll definitely see in the highlight reel, which Astralis had gone, had kind of left unaccounted for for most of that half, just ignored it as a problem. But it was a problem. It was a huge problem, and it wasn't just one player who was there. It was Beamass. It was Rops. They were all doing good. Hefty. Good first grenade, as we've come to expect from Astralis. Kerrigan definitely has his pilot's license here on the T side, because he's just always flying around corners. He'll happily take the fights, take the damage on the way. Flashing through the smoke to find that Brackets is open for the taking. Still the majority of Astralis on the other side of the map. Magis oh. continues to damage Kerrigan. It's one spotted pit. Now Mouseboard's here. This is where I think they normally would just commit, and it would have been a good idea. They find that in-between rotation, and now they're kind of slowing it down a little bit. They turn a corner here towards the archway. And they're looking for the opening. B-Mass will find it. 
Yeah, De Device, he's gonna have to double back. If he dies, then B is theirs for the taking. But Zipex, he was left as an anchor. And Device does cut down B Mass. Now it's Frozen's turn. And Rops, well, he's got that kill back on the A site. So Magisk in a pressured position. Well, they could still go commit towards B with each other, but they're yep. still, they gotta figure out Zipex. Zipex is making the play of the hour, right? He's coming back through spawn to try to get the kill and then maybe turn his attention away. His information is everything. And now it's starting to become kind of this 1v1 versus Pit and Zipex to come in a little bit late. What can Magis do? Dealing a bit of damage, but he dies. And if it's not Zipex with a big 1v3, then it's Mouse Sports absolutely shattering expectations after the mood was set on train. It was a very bleak mood. Skies looked gray for Mouse Sports. Now? Now anything is possible. We've got Nuke up next, a map that Godsent took both.